There are nine types of thermal insulation often used in buildings, but why so many and how are they used differently from each other? First one up is the most versatile type of insulation used in buildings, factories, ships, and even airplanes, mineral wool. Made from natural or synthetic minerals, mineral wool as part of a manufacturer's specification is fire resistant and commonly used in both residential and commercial construction. Brands like Rockwool and Knauf Insulation offer reliable mineral wool insulation products. Their insulation materials as part of a tested system provide good fire resistance and thermal performance. Nature has provided us with its own built-in thermal insulation courtesy of sheep's wool. Yes you heard me, sheep's wool. <laughs> The crimped structure of sheep wool fibres create millions of tiny air pockets that trap air just like a puffer jacket. An eco-friendly option, sheep's wool provides good insulation and is often used in sustainable builds. Companies like Thermo Fleece and Black Mountain Insulation specialise in producing sheep's wool insulation. Fiberglass has become one of the leading types of thermal insulation. Now remember that because you usually can't go wrong with trusted fiberglass. Fiberglass is lightweight, cost effective and easy to install. Isover and Knauf Insulation are the well-known brands that manufacture fiberglass insulation products. They offer a range of options suitable for different applications including walls, roofs and floors. Now what have I told you? There's something potentially even better for overall thermal performance in the real world. With up to 80% of recycled materials like old newspapers being used in its manufacturing process and fire resistant chemicals, cellulose is more environmentally friendly than the likes of fiberglass. Now the added bonus of cellulose is its ability to absorb and release moisture vapour so it can help regulate humidity levels preventing mould growth in walls. A very useful solution in environments with fluctuating humidity levels. Now what if you need something lightweight, will last longer than 50 years and has superior insulation compared to many other materials? Two other types are polyurethane which is PUR and polyisocyanurate which is P. These foam insulations are excellent for cavity walls, roofs and floors, providing high R values and low U values. Now Kingspan and Celotex are prominent brands that produce PUR and PIR insulation boards. These products are widely used for cavity walls, roofs and floors due to their high thermal efficiency. If you want to keep your building warm in the winter and cool in the summer, then polystyrene can provide potential energy savings on heating and cooling costs. Polystyrene available in two forms, expanded which is EPS and extruded which is XPS is widely used for its moisture resistant properties. Brands such as Jablite and Extratherm offer EPS insulation boards that are lightweight, cost effective and easy to install. They are commonly used for various applications including walls, roofs and floors. Manufacturers like Styrofoam and Kingspan produce XPS insulation boards. XPS offers good moisture resistance and is suitable for applications such as insulation below ground and floors and flat roofs. For situations where weight is a major concern, such as insulating attics and crawl spaces, there is a naturally occurring micalite mineral mined from deposits around the world called vermiculite. Thermal insulation is all about minimising heat transfer. It works by creating a barrier that slows down the flow of heat between the interior and the exterior of a building. U-value and R-value are two key metrics used to measure the effectiveness of insulation. Now what is U-value? This represents the rate of heat transfer through a material. A lower U-value indicates better insulation properties as less heat can escape or enter the building. And what is R value? This is the measure of a material's resistance to heat flow. A higher R value means greater insulation performance as it resists the heat transfer more effectively. In the UK, the focus is primarily on U values as they determine how well a building complies with building regulations. Now that we know about the various types of thermal insulation, let's see how they are applied to different parts of a building. Internal walls. Insulation is often applied between stud or cavity walls to prevent heat loss within the building. External wall insulation involves applying insulation materials to the outside of the building, reducing heat loss and improving energy efficiency. Roofs, lofts and attics. Insulation is laid within the attic or loft space to prevent heat from escaping through the roof. Flat roofs require insulation on the top of the ceiling 
or under the waterproofing layer. Pipes. Insulating pipes with foam or fiberglass sleeves prevents heat loss from hot water pipes and prevents freezing cold environments. Ground floors. Insulation is placed under ground floors to minimize heat loss to the ground. So let's quickly recap the benefits of thermal insulation. Firstly, it reduces energy consumption, lowering heating and cooling costs. It enhances comfort by maintaining consistent indoor temperatures. Insulation also provides acoustic insulation, reducing noise transmission. Also, it contributes to sustainability efforts by reducing carbon emissions. So remember to consider lower U values for building control, especially in the UK. In the description below, you'll find links to a variety of thermal insulation products we provide for all types of buildings and structures. So click the links below for those. Now, watch one of these videos to learn more about other types of building materials and to find out more about me and building materials nationwide, use this one.